In this tutorial, I will talk about a method called TSNE, which stands for T Distributed Stochastic Neighborhood Embedding. So, to give you an overview of TSNE, it's a dimension reduction slash data visualization method. So, given a very high dimensional data, it tries to project into a lower dimension, either two or three dimension, so that you can visualize it. And it was proposed by Lawrence van der Matten and Jeffrey Hinton in 2008. And since then, it has the paper has received over 2,000 citations. And it, is, it was well received by various research community, like in genomics, specifically in single cell genomics, and uh, natural language processing, speech recognition, and many other fields. So the reason why people are very much interested in TSNE is because it tends to preserve local structure at the same time preserving global structure as much as possible. So other dimension reduction methods like PCA or multidimensional scaling try to preserve the global structure and in that process they lose the local structure. But before we go into T-SNE, there's a precursor method to it called SNE, which stands for Stochastic Neighbor Embedding. And I will go through how SNE is constructed and the optimization method in SNE, and later on we will talk about uh, T-SNE. So in SNE, the aim is to match distribution of distances between points in high and low dimensional space via conditional probabilities. <coughs> And uh, in this method, they assume that distance in both high and low dimensional space are Gaussian distributed. So let's say I have xi, which is going to be the ith object or data point in high dimensional space, and yi be the ith object or data point in low dimensional space. So the way you construct the conditional probability of the similarity p, j given i, so if you have point j and i, is given by this formula. So it looks like a kernel of normal distribution, where you take the difference between the two points and essentially take the norm and then square it, put a minus in front, divide by two times the variance, sigma square i, and then exponentiate it. So the main thing that I want to convey from this formula is that if you have two data points that are very close to each other, xi minus xa, xj is going to be very small, close to zero. So when you exponentiate a number that is close to zero, it's going to be around one. And for that reason, if the two points are relatively close to each other, then this conditional probability p, j given i is going to be large. But if two points x, i and x, j are far apart, this difference is going to be very large. And then when you put a negative sign and exponentiate a very large negative number, it's going to be very close to zero. And in that case, p, j given i is going to be infinitesimal. And then q, j given i is going to be the conditional probability similarity in the low dimensional space. So it's very similar to p, j given i, except for the fact that authors assume that the variance in the low dimensional space, sigma square equals to 1 over square root of 2. So when you multiply 2 times sigma squared, which is going to be 2 times 1 over square root of 2 square, it's going to be just 1. So that's why you don't have a variance component here. So after calculating these two probabilities, um, so there's also an additional assumption that if you have, if you're comparing the exact same point i and i, so p of i given i equals q of i given i equals 0. So after constructing these two conditional probabilities in both high and low dimensional space, the objective is to 
reduce the difference between pj given i and qj given i so that when you project the high dimensional data into low dimension it looks as similar to the high dimension as possible so to do that what we construct is sort of a cost function via a measure called coolback Leibler divergence or KL divergence so this is our cost function C and it's represented as KL divergence between PI which is the probability distribution of point I in the high dimensional space and probability distribution of QI for a specific point I with respect to all the other point in the low dimensional space and then we sum all of them to get the cost function and then KL divergence can be expanded to get this type of a representation the reason why KL divergence is used is, is because KL divergence is asymmetric what that means is that it gives large cost for representing nearby data points in the high dimensional map by far apart points in the low dimensional map. So let's say you have point 1 and point 2 in high dimensional map that are very close to each other and then you map uh, that those two points very close to each other in the low dimensional map you will have very small cost. But if you map those same points 1 and 2 which are close enough, close together in the high dimensional map in far apart points in the low dimensional map their cost, their contribution to the cost is going to be very large. But if you have very widely separated points in high dimension and then you represent those two points as close together in low dimension then there will, there will only be a small cost associated with it. But if you can represent those far apart points in high dimension by far apart points in low dimension, there will be even less cost associated with it. So because of this asymmetry, SNEE tries to preserve the local structure. And then I mentioned before there's also a, a variance term, sigma square i, and the sigma is associated with a parameter called perplexity. Uh, and it's going to be used in the implementations of TSNE. So the basic idea of perplexity is that it gives, um, so it's a measure of number of close neighbor of each point. And then the sigma i is found via binary search and it's also associated with the concept of um, entropy and you can read the paper to get more idea of how that is determined. So here's the gradient of the cost function. So I show you the cost function with KL divergence in it and then you and then when you um, differentiate it with respect to yi this is going to be your cost function. So we have a, a cost function and a gradient for the cost function and a, a minimization problem. So we use gradient descent algorithm in order to do that optimization. And in the case of SNE, in addition to the gradient of the cost function, it also has a momentum term to speed up the optimization and to avoid local optima. So this momentum term is not something that is specific to SNE, but it has been used in various other uh, optimization algorithms to for the exact same purpose. So here is the gradient descent formula. So you have the solution at iteration t is equal to solution at iteration t minus 1 plus the learning rate eta times the gradient of the cost function. So this is usually the formula. These two components are usually the formula in the gradient descent formula. <clears throat> and then you also have this momentum term alpha of t 
times the difference between solution at iteration t minus 1 minus the solution at iteration t minus 2. So that's how you perform SNE. So you define these similarities and define a cost function, get the gradient for the cost function, and try to minimize it in order to get the low dimensional map. But SNE has two main drawbacks. One is that the cost function is difficult to optimize, and also there is a phenomena called crowding problem. The basic idea of the crowding problem is that if you have if you have points that are moderately far apart and there are points that are nearby, SNE tends to clump all of them together to make, uh, to make those points crowded together. So that's a problem that is associated with the SNE. And that's why we have T-SNE with novel features to overcome those two drawbacks. So the novel features in T-SNE are represented through cost function. So the first one is um, the fact that the cost function in T-SNE is symmetrized version of that in SNE. What I meant by that is that in the symmetrized version of SNE, P of I given J is equal to P of J given I, and Q of I given J is equal to Q of I J given I. And also, the other main feature is that in the case of T-SNE, it uses a student T distribution to compute the similarities between data points in the low dimensional map, in the low dimensional map. So, I will end this video here, and there will be a part two where I explain about the T-SNE algorithm and the the way T-SNE is um, constructed and also the software implementation and what kind of precaution you should take when conducting uh, T-SNE and T-SNE interpretation. So I will see you in the next video of this tutorial.